Hey, so as I mentioned um, yesterday, uh, my technical counselor is coming today, Dave, and um, we will um, more than likely, I'll just be putting the, uh, putting the camera on, on uh, uh, just kind of do a time lapse and um, I'll ask him first, you know, how comfortable he is in front of the camera, so. But uh, he's going to inspect my plane and uh, basically give me permission to, um, to begin to cover so that I can get everything sealed up and start the covering process. And uh, after that, after he leaves, depending on how long that takes, I might spend just a little more time and get uh, uh, work on this headrest a little bit more. So, all right. So uh, he'll be here pretty soon and um, uh, this will be a big step today. All right. So this is my technical counselor, Dave, and I thought it would be best to just overdub, um, overdub this. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure how comfortable Dave would be in front of the camera, so I thought I would just put this on this way. So we're, we've been taking uh, just a general view of the uh, whole airplane and um, just sort of explaining to him kind of some of the principles of the design of this airplane and then uh, he was interested in what type of engine I was going to be using so we talked a little bit about that and then uh, we talked about how the how the wing is mounted to the fuselage and um, some of those uh, some of those different things and then I was just letting him know that um, you know some of the bolts are not permanent um, but he was definitely taking note of uh, bolts that didn't have enough thread showing and um, you know, he kind of explained to me that actually I, I hadn't heard this before, but the the goal is for the the uh, nut to actually end up right in the middle of the threads, and that's why the uh, one to three thread rule. Um, and plus, it just makes sure that you're not bottoming out and not getting enough uh, torque on the on the bolt. And here we were um, we were talking uh, a little bit about the uh, control system. Um, how the he hadn't seen the Teleflex cables before used for uh, operating uh, all of the control systems. Um, made the comment that they're uh, probably quite draggy, which I'm sure is uh, was true, especially the ones for the ailerons that are sticking out of the side of the fuselage. And then we were uh, kind of discussing the the mount that I was working on for the headrest. Uh, we were talking about the gascalator. Um, he actually was suggesting that the gascalator be moved to the uh, firewall and um, the only challenge I have with that is that it's no longer at the low point of the system when the planes at rest in the hangar um, and at least this way water is going to drain back from the firewall to the gascalator and water is going to drain from the tanks down to the uh, gascalator where I have it positioned so I realize having it in the cockpit is not ideal um, but Anyway, the you know, visit lasted about two hours, and uh, he made a joke there about my IFR panel, which was kind of funny. And we're over here doing some paperwork, and uh, you saw me taking some notes earlier on some of the things that we uh, talked about and some things that I needed to um, just take note of. Uh, but the the best part, um, the best part of all, is that he felt like I was ready to. All right, so uh, Dave is gone, and um, uh, that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good visit. Um, I have my yellow form. Um, I have some notes here of uh, kind of what we talked about, and it's you know th this is um, for those of you who might not be familiar with the uh, EAA Experimental Aircraft Association in the U.S. Um, and how our system works is a. Uh, you um you get a visit from a, a technical counselor. Uh, in this case, since I have a complete, you have to have a visit before you close anything. And since everything in my plane is open, um, you can get pretty much to the point of covering the plane um, before you get a uh, before you get a visit. And and um, there's a form that gets filled out and filed, and then there'll be another visit. Uh, later, after uh, after I get things uh, sealed up and and covered, and that'll be more, you know, kind of a bolt by bolt uh, inspection. Since I'm only partially partially assembled, um, 
and I had I already had some notes about a few things that I needed to pay attention to. He basically was just supporting what I already had sort of uh, figured out. Although he did recommend that uh, one of the things he suggested was that I go around and find some voids like here. Um, you can see a little light through uh, here and just maybe mix a little cabosil with the epoxy and uh, kind of flow it into any of those um, areas that I can spot and just he said just kind of start start in one place and kind of work my way around the whole structure there's like another one right here in this corner um, I'm, I feel good about the joint um, but uh, it can't hurt to just fill in some of those some of those little voids and the uh, uh, he gave me some things to think about as it relates to the gascalator. He really recommended that I move it to the firewall instead of having it down by my feet and then just putting a uh, uh, putting a fuel selector switch um, just in the cockpit, which would be super easy to accomplish on that vertical member. I actually have it here somewhere. I've already purchased one that I didn't use because I was going to put the gascalator down there. Um, although he highly recommends moving it, moving it to the firewall, I'm going to definitely put some thought into that um, and see uh, see what I think about that, and potentially uh, having the uh, fuel pump kind of in the location where the uh, where the gas escalator was going to be. But I'll I'll figure that out. Um, but the since I'm lightly assembled, um, which means I don't have very many bolts that are already kind of permanent. Um, an example of some that are installed are like these two right here. Um, those are installed already because the back side of that bolt is inside the D-tube. So, um, and like these are installed, um, you're required to have one to three threads. Um, no more than that, no less than that. Uh, this is an example of a bolt that I just had laying around that I threw in here. Then there's no threads coming out because it's just temporary because I knew I was going to take the wing off anyway. Um, the bolts that are holding this um, bracket here are what the plan calls for. Um, I believe they're number sixes, but you can see there are no threads coming out this side. So those need to be sevens or tens with washers, whatever it takes. Uh, the same for out here at the tip. This is the bolt that the plan calls for, but this bolt um, is not enough. So um, he just recommended that I start in one place, work my way around, make a list of the bolts that have been identified in the plan as something that are incorrect, and then write what, what I need to do. like right wing tip bearing bracket bolts need to be you know a and sevens rather than sixes and just go ahead and make that list for myself all the way around so that when it comes time to assemble things back together i don't lose track of uh it'll just save me time later obviously when i assemble it i'll know what i need to do um but you know this is a bolt that goes in prior to covering. So you want to make sure you get that right before you cover that up. So anyway, <clears throat> there were some other, a uh, few other things um, uh, that he mentioned, not, not a whole lot. Um, most of all, he was pretty impressed with the airplane. Uh, uh, well, he was really impressed with, with the airplane. Um, and uh, uh, he had never seen the design before and he actually likes that a lot too so uh yeah so i am uh maybe gonna just bend a few brackets while i'm here i've got uh i've got this um uh, this is dry now i can get the staples out of this and uh make the brackets that are going to hold it in place i've already got them sort of pre-made here i just have to shape them and then bend them uh, but first I'll get the I'm gonna get the staples out of here. I'm gonna spend just a, maybe an hour or so 
after uh, his visit to uh, just do a couple things. And uh, yeah, uh, all right, big step today. All right, so I'm bending my uh, brackets here, which I've got shaped now. And you can see I've got two lines drawn on there because I want to put my clamp, uh, my vise, right to the bottom line. And that way, when I bend the radius, it basically ends up taking up this additional space. And then I end up with a little bit shorter leg, a little bit longer leg. The longer leg goes on the deck. The shorter leg goes up against the uh, headrest. So just plopping that in there, put them on the line. And then my uh, uh, the front edge of my vise here, actually, actually take my uh, file and I just make sure that's round and smooth uh, when I get ready to bend this over. So, and then I just start the bend with a, a crescent wrench and uh, I just put it right in the middle and I bring it right to my other line here right there and I just get the bend started. Then I'm using a dead blow hammer and I have a reference I made with my angle here so I kind of know where I need to be. And you can see how that turns out right there. Now we go test it. You can see that I've already done the back two right here. So those two are good. And now the front one, got the longer leg on the deck and the other leg here. It's gonna go about there and you can see I've got to bend it just a little bit more, so. Test that one real quick. Has been the case every time, and it's just ever so slightly overbent now. So, all I got to do is just tug on it just a little bit with the crescent wrench in it ends up being just right, so. Let's check that out here. Now we have a really nice fit. One more to go. All right, so I marked my hole location um, for my nut plate. The front's going to have the nut plates, the back's going to have uh, wood screws. And uh, so now all I have to do is uh, just center my nut plate on the hole. I can just sight that from the top here. And then I can uh, mark my two hole locations where I've got to drill 330 seconds to fit the nut plate. 
So I'll get my pencil here. Marking the first one. It's a nice small hole. I can get my center punch right in the middle of it there. And then I'll drill my uh, 3 30 seconds hole. do is bring the nut up from the bottom, the, uh, the bolt, I mean, uh, and get that. Get that started on the nut plate. make sure we're good here. I think I'll stick a ribbon in there. Alright, so stick a ribbon in there to hold that in place while we drill the second hole. way. We should be able to get a rivet in there. And we should be able to get a rivet in here. And we're all good. These are flush rivets, so we will need uh, my anchor not as on the floor, but they're so small I should be able to do this by hand. I'm going to do is I'm going to harden those up with a little thin CA.
That way when we put the nut plate on. It won't sink into the wood as much, so. Now I've got a urethane in this area. Before we can actually uh, complete that, so. have a tendency to really sink in uh, to the wood. It can only go, it might pull it pretty pretty good, but those are only 330 seconds for the nut plates, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so that one's done. And that's for, obviously for this side. So, so that, flush rivet out here just hides underneath the underneath the steel right there so all right but before I can actually install these I've got to get that area your thing did I already say that I might have said that already so um, yeah so anyway uh, that's uh, that's gonna be it for me today and um, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out and uh, checking out the video and seeing kind of what this whole process is like and uh, hey I will catch you later